All right, so we're going to give you a uh, CEREC tutorial, and we're going to get into our prep check program. So the first thing you're going to do is um, open up the CEREC program, which is labeled CEREC SW 4.43. You don't want to open up CEREC Connect. This is a different program um, that is generally used down on the clinic floor. Um, so wait for this to open. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is add a new patient. You'll go down here and click that button. For dentist, we're going to put your name, so the student's name. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to put my name is Clark Chen. And for last name, I want you to put the tooth number that you're scanning in. So for today's example, we're going to be doing tooth number 30. And first name, I want you to write what type of crown we're doing. In this scenario, we're going to do a metal ceramic crown, so MCC, and I want you to label it with a number. So there's going to be times in Sim Clinic where you're going to do the same tooth, um, you know, a second time. So we want to have like an MCC1 or an MCC2 so you can keep track of the individual teeth. Uh, you do have to put a date. Um, instead of date of birth, we'll just put today's date. Uh, once you have those things inputted, the software will now let you to go on by hitting add case. So to select the tooth, we'll go single restoration. What we're going to be doing is a crown. And then we're going to select biogeneric individual. And material um, is not critical, but uh, just for convenience, we'll hit CEREC blocks. So at this point, you want to hover over the tooth and then click on the tooth that you're going to be working on. Um, at this point, the double arrow here uh, will allow us to acquire our image. So we'll click here, and this will move us to the next window. And you can see at the top is the workflow that we're going to be following. The first part was administration, where we put in all the information about the crowns that we want, uh, and acquisition is when we're going to take the images. Sometimes you'll find that the camera screen is going to be black or not um, showing, and that just means that it automatically turned it off. In order to turn it on, you just go to the blue cam down here, and that'll flip uh, the camera on. So acquisition, and what you want to do is hit uh, the Add Catalog button. And if we're working on number 30, it's our lower, you want to add Biocopy Lower. So what this does is add a fourth window down here, labeled Biocopy Lower. This is going to be where our pre-prepared tooth, that image is going to go. So make sure that's selected and our camera's on. Uh, again, what we're going to do is um, spray, so get that powdered. And then from here we have our camera and you can see there's uh, two black tabs and you can rest the black tabs onto your type it on tooth so that uh, the camera needs to be pretty still to take uh, images. So what I'll do is I'll start at a tooth behind, so tooth number one, or tooth number 31, and then have the camera sitting on top of it, and then rest until I hold it still, and I want to move forward so that I still have some of tooth 31 um, still in the window because the computer or the program needs enough data to overlap the two together. So again, I'm going to move forward again, and then I'm going to have some overlapping images of 230, but also 229. So you can see as I take the image, the software will automatically update um, the pictures. So what we can see here is if we zoom in, and I'll show you how all these buttons work. So the circle here is our mouse button. Okay, so this moves around. Um, the left click allows you to rotate the image. The middle button allows you to zoom in and out, and then the right click allows you to pan. So you can see in our image that there's some missing data here. So since we've taken the image straight from the top, it wasn't able to capture some of the information below uh, towards the, the soft tissue. So what we're going to do is take our camera back, hover over number 30, um, but we're going to slightly tilt it so that we capture some of that missing data. 
And I want to show you, as you do that, the computer will fill in some of that um, uh, blank spaces. So we'll do it again for this side, for the buckle. And you're not always going to get 100% fill, but we want to fill kind of as much as we can. Um, so at this point, this is sufficient for what we're doing. You have most of the tooth covered. Um, and at this point, you are good to save your file. So you want to go up to the uh, folder up top, or the arrow, and then you want to hit export. So you're going to go to your thumb drive, and then I have a folder I created. And for consistency, let's do uh, the tooth number, the type of crown, so metal ceramic, and then the attempt number. This is our first attempt at tooth number 30, and we can save. So it's going to export. Now at this point, you're done with um, uh, CEREC at this sequence. What you're going to do now is go back to your bench, and you're going to prepare tooth number 30 for the appropriate crown. Um, so this will allow a chance for another student to, to use it while you're uh, prepping your tooth. Um, and what you'll do to get back on once you're done prepping and you want to move on in the next step uh, of this process is you go import and you'll select your file and then it should get you back to this window right here. Okay. What you can do to set it up for the next student is hit the start screen. Um, so you can save, it'll save to the desktop, but you also have it on your thumb drive. So now this is ready for the next student um, to to start. Uh, to get your case back, you can go import and then select the file. Alternatively, um, if, CEREC, if the program is closed, um, you can go to your jump drive and then you can double click on the RST file. That's the type of file that they uh, save it as and it'll launch a uh, the CEREC program to uh, where you previously left off. So two ways to do it. You can open it directly uh, if the program is not launched already. Um, if it is launched already, um, we can go just import and open um, your file. Okay. So at this point, um, we've prepared the tooth number 30 and we want to click on lower jaw. And again, we can turn on our camera. And before we start scanning, uh, similarly to your pre-op, we're going to spray tooth number 30. Now, this is a rough preparation. Just wanted to give you an idea um, and demo the program. And this is by no means a great prep. But again, we're going to start tooth number 31. And generally, one picture is enough. And at this point, what's important when you're hovering over your prep, you want to be over in the uh, path of insertion as much as you can. So you want to orient it so it's not leaning one way or the other. You want to kind of imagine how that crown is coming on and off the tooth. And the other part that's important too is your margin. You see how the mesial margin there is blocked? Or if I turn it too much this way, the distal is. You want it so that you can see the margin circumferentially. And I'll lower it down a bit, and then that'll help stabilize it to get my image. And again, I'm going to go over, and you probably need about a fourth of it to overlap from the previous prep. Stabilize, and I'll take a picture. And again, um, at this point, we've only taken three. But what you want to do is also analyze your prep and see where you have missing data. So you can see on the buccal and lingual, we can take a few more images uh, to try to fill that in. So let's go to the buccal and then slightly, maybe 10 degrees, turn it, stable. And then it'll take that picture. I'll show you on the lingual. So generally about five is enough. If you have to take a few more, that's fine. If you do it with less, that's okay. So as you take the pictures, what it's doing is it's stitching together your biocopy with your current prep. And you see these little uh, thinking uh, logos? This means that it's trying to stitch it together. And once it's stitched together, 
you can see that the biocopy is overlaid um, over our preparation. Okay. So once you see that green arrow checked, you, kn you know you're okay to move on, and that'll close out our acquisition phase. So we'll hit the double arrows to um, go forward. So now it's uh, rendering all these images into one file. So it'll do that for your prep and also your biocopy. Right, at this point we want to set the model axis. And this just means that we want to orient our prep in the appropriate place in the arch. So I'm going to click, so this is right click and drag. So you can see this is sort of the molar area, premolar area. These are where your anterior teeth are. We're doing tooth number 30, so we want to put it in the general vicinity and then uh, left click to be able to rotate. And we can go to this window here to move it in the vertical position. So we can drop that down. This designates your uh, occlusal plane. So our cusp tip should land relatively close to that. And this is our curve of speed. So that looks pretty good. Uh, it's not super critical to line everything up exactly, but you do want to be in the ballpark. Once you have things set, hit OK. And that will allow us to move on um, to set our margin. So at this point, we need to designate where our margin is. And we can zoom in a little bit. And the first time you go through it, it'll be selected on the auto margin feature. So what you do is double click on one area. And you can drag and just move your mouse so that it moves along the margin. Now, the computer does a pretty good job identifying where you have a sharp ledge. Uh, so I generally will go maybe, you know, a third to half the tooth um, and then click and that will lock that in that position and you'll go around and lock that in and then we can complete uh, the circle here. Uh, sometimes the computer will go a little bit off than where you want like here and let's say you accidentally click there you can still complete it and what we can do once it's set is zoom in here and we can adjust the margin to where it should be. So I'll click here. This is our margin. And then close the loop. So you kind of want to go around and you can look at it at different views to see if your lines are at that junction where it starts to drop off. Another feature or another way to look at it too is from underneath the crown. And you can see, for example, there that our margin probably extends more flat like that. Okay, so you'll spend some time to marginate your um, your prep, but if you've done a good job prepping and you got nice smooth margins, this part should be pretty straightforward. Once you're done with that, you can click on Define Insertion Axis, and here what we're doing is setting our path of withdrawal. And the goal here is to find a path in which you can see your margins. You don't want it where it's blocking the margin. And you want to minimize the yellow that's displayed. The yellow signifies any undercuts that you may have. So right about there looks OK. And I'll hit OK to move on. Uh, at this point, we're ready to get into prep check. Okay. So to get into prep check, you want to hit this arrow key up top and then you want to hit run application and this will bring up this window where you click on prep check 2.1 so it's important to choose the right course this will be labeled fix process 2019 and click on show details this is another important um, window so for our metal ceramic crown MCC it's going to be a shoulder on the buckle, so hit shoulder, and from there it'll bring up this template where we have a number 30 PFM master prep. And under pre-op, it's really important to select export override. Um, so once that's selected, the rest you can leave alone, but pre-op needs to be labeled export override. The template needs to be selected as uh, your master and then the margin type needs to be correct. 
So verify that all those are um, set correctly and then you can hit open in prep check. And this is gonna launch um, the prep check software, which is a different software program um, than the scanning um, software that we we're just using. So give it some time for it to load. Perfect. So now you can see this is prep check. Okay. So at this point, since we have a, uh, we selected master prep, what you can do is click on this master preparation button. And this will compare what we have prepared to our master prep. And the colors signify how far away you are from that master preparation. Um, so the range goes from minus uh, 0.3 millimeters to plus 0.3 millimeters. If you're within that range, then it'll show up blue. If you've reduced too much compared to the master, it'll turn up red. And if you haven't reduced enough, then it's green. Um, so as you hover over with your mouse at different areas, it'll actually give you the exact number reading or the measurement reading um, in real time. So one of the features that you can do is you can change the transparency. So this, in this case, this is our preparation. So if we have it completely transparent, all that's left is our master prep. So let's turn the master prep. This is what the master looks like. And again, you can change the transparency of that if you want to see how it compares to what you've prepared. Uh, another nice feature is the slice tool. So if you hit on slice, it'll give you a cross-sectional view of the tooth. So what I'm going to do is actually zoom out and you can look at, uh, it has these balls that you can use to rotate. So it takes some work to get to the right orientation but you're going to kind of go back and forth, zoom in and out, depending on what's easier for you, and rotate it. And you generally want to get this cross section where you see buckle and lingually. Um, so rotate just a bit more. And then these arrow keys allow you to kind of walk through the slice, uh, slice by slice. So we can make that a little bit more parallel. Okay, so we're about mid-tooth here. And we'll turn it. And we're going to turn off this grid. And what you can do is zoom in here. And you'll see how your prep compares to the master prep. And again, you can hover the mouse over in the areas and see the distance that you are away. Um, so there's areas where we're overreduced, and there's some areas that we're underreduced. So again, you can walk through your prep and see and analyze it according to uh, the master. So take some time to kind of play around with this feature, the slice tool, and getting familiar uh, just looking at the colors. Um, so that's compared to master prep. Um, and the next thing you can do is click on analysis. So this will analyze your preparation in relation to the pre-existing tooth. So what it looked like before you even touched it. So if you hit analysis, we can hit uh, reduction occlusal and this will overlay the pre-prepared tooth to what you have prepared and again green are areas that fall outside so you've under prepared or haven't reduced as much and red is you've reduced more and the criteria or the uh, tolerance level is set uh, within these numbers here so this is anything below 1.3 will be in green anything that you've reduced um, over 1.7 millimeters compared to the master prep will show up in red. Um, and the same is true for our axial reduction. So if you go here, you can hit axial reduction. And then you can see, um, again, the values for axial reduction may be a little bit different, but it'll show you areas where you're over or under reduce according to your parameters. Um, the slice tool still works in this feature and again you do have to manipulate it to get it in the right slice so that's pretty close you can view it from different angles and again this is going to take some practice for you to learn how to manipulate these angles um, but from here you can see your reduction and see how well does it follow the anatomy the original anatomy of the tooth you can see you know how deep you are in the central groove 
if you got your functional and non-functional cost re uh, reductions if they're appropriate. Um, and I'll walk you really quickly through some of the other features too. So we can hit next tool to get back to our tools tab. Um, and we'll turn off the slice. And we can go through undercut. This tells you where your undercuts are. They show up in red. Taper will measure your total occlusal convergence. Here's some numbers here that it takes from the buccal lingual mesial distal. Um, and those are primarily the ones that we'll be having you look at is the reductions, both occlusal and axial. We'll have you look at the undercut and also taper. Uh, and the others you can kind of look at um, if you want on your own time, but they're a little less uh, meaningful. Um, so yeah, take some time, learn how to manipulate your images, play with the slice function, and get used to analyzing your preps uh, both from this view and also your 2D slice view. So once you've kind of completed um, your analysis, what you can do is we'll go to this arrow key and we'll hit create report. So what this does is it'll pump out a PDF of um, your preparation analysis. So you have everything labeled and then you can see um, some of these values um, in our prep check report. So again, this is the tolerance range from our master prep to what you've prepped. Red is overprepared, green is under. Uh, you can look at the undercuts, um, some of the taper, and your reduction values. So what you want to do is uh, save this PDF. So we'll go to save a copy. We'll go to your thumb, our thumb drive, and we'll try to keep it the same name so we're not too confused. So we'll go to fixed, and this was tooth number 30, MCC1. So that'll save as a PDF file. Um, what you also want to do, too, is we need to keep track of your prep check files. So it, while you're in prep check, hit export case, and then we'll go to our thumb drive. And again, tooth number 30, M MCC. And this will save it as a prep check file, which is a .pce file. So the idea is that after you've run through your analysis, if we were to go to your thumb drive, you would have uh, those files saved. So a PCE file, which is a prep check file, PDF, which is the printout, and then the RST file is the original uh, scanning that we did in the uh, CERAC 4.43 software.